Thanks so much for having me here, All Protocols Observed. I am JJ Foote. My, my proper name is Arnold, but if you call me Arnold, I'm going to think you're my mother and I've done something really badly. Um, I have an amazing team at my office that allows me to do the things that are listed under my name, which is a lot of, you know, kind of cool stuff. Um, a bunch of awards. We are probably the most awarded agency, certainly in Jamaica. Um, and among maybe the top three in the Caribbean. And we're very lucky to have had the kind of clients that, that afford us the opportunity to work with them in the space, right? So how many people grew up going out into the backyard and like planting something, make it happen, take it inside, eat it? Does that make you a farmer? No, how many people go and take a piece of paper, remember the day, and you fold the thing, and you sit down in the class, and you just saw, and see who, how far it can go, how many people do that? Anybody win that contest? Yeah, no, you won the contest, really? No, well, but are you a pilot? Right. So that is a real challenge in our industry. There are a lot of people who have a computer. Everybody have a computer here, the guys using the phones, but you have something, right? And they come out of school, and they have a computer, and they have soft skills, which I care personally nothing about. Soft, soft skills are given. That's like saying you're gonna have food as soon as I finish chatting, right? So soft skills are great, it's necessary, but that's like saying, you know, you had to brush your teeth at night. Okay. The, what we see as an agency and the challenges that we're having is that we're not getting people that are work ready. Yes, you were right, you look, you look at you. You're on form. No, wrong way. Wrong form. Yeah. There you go. What is work ready? Work ready means that you have graduated, you have your diploma, you come in for a job interview, you say all the stuff that you have your certifications in and all the stuff that was discussed earlier, and you scored, you know, great grades and, every, and you did this dean's list and you probably plant two trees on Labor Day and you did something. Right? And I'm supposed to hire you. So we've done that. We've hired people just like that. And I'm sure that a lot of companies, certainly in the agency business, have done just that. The challenge is, they're not work ready. So I'm going to start from the, uh, the very kind of basic stuff. Put an ad in the paper the other day, and on LinkedIn, and uh, Facebook, I think. You can look if you want. You can, you can, you'll see it. It was for an account executive. So, I, got a, I probably got 100 um, resumes and applications and dear sirs and all those kinds of things. And they're all for accounting. And that's not what we were looking for. We're looking for an account executive. So first, there's the understanding of the advertising business is missing. Now, it hurts me a little bit because Caramac, as a... As a a kind of part of university was driven by my dad, who had a vision to create something that could feed into marketing and communications. And they do a really, really good job at teaching the things that need to happen for you to get into the business. Uh, School of Art does a really, really good job at training people to do the things to get into the business but they're still not industry ready. If we take people, and we take applications usually uh, November to January for people to come on summer um, work experience from high school. We haven't really gotten anybody from college this year, but mostly from high school. And they come, they're, we don't know really what to do with them. We, they accompany us, they shadow people so they have the experience, but they really didn't do hands-on. But when we get people from any of the institutes, including Hart, we have two. We um, have a bunch of people from Carmack. We have uh, UWE, um, UTEC, nearly said cast and dated myself, um, and School of Art. And some of the best people we have are self-taught. So how is that when we're speaking about leaving a tertiary institute 
coming out with your diploma, de degree, whatever it is, looking for a job and you're not ready. But somebody who is self-taught out of high school is ready. I'm not saying ever don't go to a tertiary institution. What I'm saying is go there with a purpose and a passion for what you want to do. Because passion is that tiebreaker. Passion is what makes you see what you have learned to do. Turn on a computer, press this command Z, whatever it is, right? Or control Z on a PC. Passion is what takes that and makes it something else. So soft skills, is a, that's a given, right? Everybody here have a computer, right? You guys are all schoolers, I'm assuming. You're at heart, right? Any of you in design, creative, anything in, in my field? Yes, yeah, so I actually consider myself multi-talented because I'm actually at the Jagger School, which is automotive, but I actually work at CVM as a video editor, and it's a funny story how I started in that. Yes. So where do you want to be when you're done? Where do you want to be when I finish? Well, to be honest, still, I plan to own a business on the automotive side, and at the same time, I would, for instance, I have a garage. So I work on cars from, say, probably, I would have my own business, so from, mm, I set my own hours, so probably 10 to 3, and then go home, take a shower, then probably go on a computer, do video editing for like three or four hours because I build that talent over two years. So, yes, I'm versed in both fields. I love the passion for your own development. I think that's fantastic. And if I was wearing a hat, I would take it off to you, but I'm not wearing a hat. But I should have, now that I think about it, right? But that's great. So the issue, the negative part, for me, personally, as a, as a business owner, is you can't help me, because you haven't committed. So let me explain what I mean by that. OK, this is a room question now. All you talking over there, I hear you. I'm going to ask you a basic question. I'm going to ask you, are you a chicken or are you a pig? OK, no context. Just think about it for a second. Are you a chicken or a pig? Hold up your hand if you're a pig. You like pork? <laughs> All right, so what's the difference between a chicken and a pig? Well, a chicken will just make the eggs, but a pig commits. Who said that? Yeah, you get me. Sacrifice. So sacrifice is critical to what you do. Editing is sacrifice. But to commit to communication, commit to advertising as a business is hard. Why is it hard? Because there is this feeling in the creative industries that you can just be creative. You can wear your jeans down below your butt. You can have, you know, flowing locks, not hitting the thing, but you can have the flowing locks, shave one side, color them red, green, and gold, and pierce your nose, your ears, your mouth, everything. And look, somebody says, look at that person, they're so hyped, so creative. And you know what that person wants to do? That person wants to be a director. They want to be a director of photography. Yes or no? Lie? Straight, right? So there's a guy I'm going to tell you. This is a real concern, real problem that we have. So we have an agency and we have a production house. So I'm speaking from the agency, but kind of bridge the gap. So there's a guy called Earl Brown. You should know Earl Brown. No? Okay. Earl Brown is a gaffer. He's probably the best gaffer in the country. If I'm shooting something, <laughs> if Early B's not on the set, I'm not happy. Earl is 72 years old. There's no Earl that is 35 years old. There is no Earl that's 25 years old. That's a huge problem for my industry and for me personally. Why? Why is there nobody? Because you have your thing there tie out and you have your pants down and, thing and you're super creative because you're a director or a director of photography, right? And you will get, let's say you're successful, you'll get a job once a week. Look at that, I've always free time once a week. Thousand US dollars a day, give or take, right? So you have one day, you earn a thousand dollars. You say, well, I did four thousand dollars for the month. I'm good. The gaffer works every day, and he gets five hundred dollars a day. Every day. Nobody wants that work. Why? Because you're not a director or a editor. So there's this challenge with that, a misunderstanding about the opportunities that exist within advertising, that 
uh, when I say advertising, I mean advertising and communications, the film industry, everything that is advertising, that goes beyond the boundaries of things that are pretty and creative and the things that you want to be because you're young and the whole world is your oyster and it's not like that, man. You end up 50 years old, want to be thinking you don't, there are all these other guys just like you coming for my job. You better be damn good and you better be way beyond turning on your computer. So, what is the gap? The gap isn't just the fact that somebody wants to use, uh, wants to be a DP or uh, an, a director or an editor. That's not the gap. The biggest gap, that is the passion gap within the communications industry, is the lack of the ability to effectively tell a story. A meaningful story. One that says, this happened, then this happened, and then this. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. I don't care whether you can use Photoshop. I don't care whether you can use PowerPoint or Final Cut and Premiere, and I don't care. But if you're a DP, if you're a graphic designer, copywriter, a photographer, any of those skills, you better can tell a story. Because if you can't tell a story, you can't help me. Because there are a million people that have a camera. Everybody in this room has a phone with a camera, yes or no? Every one of you are photographers, right? Because you took a picture. But you're not a commercial photographer. So, and if you were, there are, tons, there are people, you see them on, on social media all the time, right? Social media, oh, that's a whole other thing. But they, you see this guy and he'll demonstrate, or you take your phone and you do this and you shoot this and this is how you can shoot it with your phone and stuff is brilliant and used, it happens all the time. But you know what he can do? He can tell a story. And that is a critical difference. So if we were to fix a gap, the first gap that we have to fix is, I don't care whether it's English language, patois, French, I really don't care. Tell a story. Articulate your idea in a way that compels people to listen. Change that whole dynamic that's around what you're preparing so that people listen and react and change a behavior. What is behavioral change? Behavioral change is walking in front of a whole group of people that you're intimidated because they're from all sorts of cross-section of the country. You know none of them and asking them to stand and they do so. That's behavioral change. Because y'all didn't plan to stand, did you? Right. So that's part of what we do in advertising. So something was said a little while ago. I believe it was on AI, on embracing AI. Be fearful of AI. Where AI is today is not where it is a year from now. If you're in the creative services and all you can do is turn on your computer, I don't need you to do that tonight because I can go on to anything and practically say, hey, make me a picture of so and so and so. You know, write me a story of so and so and so. Then suddenly it needs prompts. Well, I don't know how to prompt that because that requires storytelling, which you can't do because you don't speak English or you don't want to you know, translate what you want to say into some kind of passion story to, to motivate people. Because even AI, even AI can tell you a story. It'll be the same story that you could do, and you could do. You could both say, tell me, a, tell me a, write me a commercial for that water. The glass is clearly not working. That water there. Water, and the other water, two waters, right? So you could write one and write the other, and it's probably going to give you the same thing, right? Give or take a couple words. The difference, though, is going to be who can get that AI that's going to work with you, give it the right prompts to tell you the different story if you're using AI. But you know what? We are freaking AI. We have our own processor. We have our own nervous system that works through our own transmission stuff, and we can make our own bloody ideas. So AI must only be a supporting act for what you can do if you're prepared for your business. So there are gaps in training. Thank you very much. There are gaps in training, and passion is the greatest gap that cannot be filled by any teacher. So you as an individual need to have the desire to make a difference in your career, in the industry, and all that stuff. Without that desire, clarity, it's my advice. If you want to run multiple businesses, a lot of people doing that, fantastic, and my hat's off if I had it, to you. Not a criticism. For my business, oh, you can't. I need people, I need a lot of pigs. 
Um, because advertising is a responsibility that drives every single industry that we are covering today, including the gravedigger, because that's a cemetery. And the cemetery, Romans versus, give me, I don't know, I don't want to know the cemetery people, right? Until, you know, and when it's time, I won't know them anyway, so it's okay. So, right, the, it is the competitive advantages, and that's, that, that advertising gives one brand over another. So you need to have that passion to be a part of that, that behavioral change for the brand that you represent. The Triple AJ some years ago started, and it fizzled out a relationship with Hart. I really would love to see that rekindle. And feel free to reach out to me and get my numbers from George or anybody else. Um, and I would love to be a part of bringing that closer. But I have one suggestion before I wrap up. That's how can we help? Thank you so much. All right, how can we help? I have one suggestion, and I don't know if it's something that's feasible. Only you can tell me if it's feasible, I guess. I want to start an agency for university training. So on one side, Edna, Hart, Carmack, UE, UTEC will submit people every year for to be accepted into whatever, however big it is. You can tell me if it's possible. And use that agency with at least three years of skills behind the people are in there for one year, those people are in there, to create communications and solutions to drive business for startup companies that can't afford a regular agency. That gives you the working skill, having done something practical that you can put on your resume, that can be award-winning, that can go in as your own credentials. Say, yes, I have done that. I have written that copy, designed that stuff, cut that thing, created that tech, and I've made a difference for this startup brand. The startup brand can't be with the agency for more than one year, and the staff, being the students, can't be with the agency for more than one year. But this allows you one step, and there's only reason, one reason why I'm saying this is that last, and this I'm cheating a little bit, so last week, I happened to be at the Idea Awards, which was done at Full Sail University in Orlando. It, um, it's in a studio, kind of about this big, give or take. It's called Full Sail Live. And the Idea Awards were conducted there, and all the tables were there, and the big screens, so on, so on, everything was, it was amazing. Light show, smoke, pyrotechnics, all that stuff. Every single element of that, including the communication, was done by students. Everything. One company here, as far as I know, bring that off maybe in Jamaica and the work was sublime it was amazing so two things came out of that one that's something that's a real practical experience that we could actually do here there's no reason why we can't and I'm sure other agency people would would come on and join with us to help to give that kind of oversight hands-off oversight to give you guidance to get to make success for those startup businesses so startup businesses can have an agency and they have a chance for success so you know it's kind of a hand, two hands clapping kind of thing and then on the other side, selfishly, totally, one of you guys might call me and say, hey, you know, uh, JJ, I would, I, would, I would love an opportunity to work at Admark, and I can interview you, and I know that you have the practical foundation to be able to make a difference for my clients. And every other agency in the country would be more than happy to have that happen. So, wrapping that up, feel free to call me in the event that you are interested in anything like that. Cheers. Um, have a great rest of thing. Oh, and thank you for the opportunity. This was completely selfish of me to be here because I got a chance to talk to you. And hopefully whatever I said here will make a little bit of a difference for my own agency. Thank you for posing and smiling. God bless everybody.